It is the month of February, which also celebrates Black History Month. In today's video, we want to teach you about Malcolm Little, or more commonly known as Malcolm X, and how Malcolm, his life, and his work helped to pave and change the civil rights movement in the USA. Malcolm Little was born in Omaha, Nebraska on May 19, 1925. When he was young, his family moved around often, but he spent most of his childhood in East Lansing, Michigan. Malcolm's parents were Earl and Louise Little. Earl was a Baptist minister and was a leader in an African-American group called the UNIA. Malcolm's mom, Louise, was also associated with the UNIA. She worked as a secretary and branch reporter. With both of his parents involved with the UNIA, it caused the family to be harassed by white supremacists. They even had their house set on fire and burned down once. On September 28, 1931, when Malcolm was only six years old, Malcolm's father was killed. His father was found dead on the tracks of a local streetcar. While the police said the death was an accident, there were many rumors that Earl was killed by the Black Legion, the same group thought to have burned down Malcolm's house two years previously. Now, six years later, Malcolm's mother was put into a mental institution, and not too long after that, Malcolm was put into foster care. The other children, his brothers and sisters, were scattered across many different foster homes, and young Malcolm spent the rest of his childhood apart from his family. In 1938, Malcolm was sent to the juvenile detention home in Mason, Michigan. He stayed with a white couple who treated him very well. Malcolm then went on and attended the Mason High School, where he excelled both academically as well as socially. But at 15, Malcolm dropped out of school after an encounter with his English teacher. His English teacher told him he would never become a lawyer because he was black. Malcolm, who had wanted to become a lawyer, was told by the teacher to be realistic and that Malcolm should consider becoming a carpenter instead. Next, he moved to Boston with his sister Ella. There, he worked in a variety of jobs, including a shoeshine boy, a busboy, as well as a waiter. Unfortunately, during this time, Malcolm became involved in criminal activities, including drug dealing, gambling, robbery, as well as racketeering. He also became addicted to drugs himself, and during this period of his life, he became known as Detroit Red. This was because of the reddish hair he'd inherited from his maternal Scottish grandfather. In late 1945, Malcolm returned to Boston, where his criminal lifestyle continued. Malcolm was arrested in 1946 for robbery. He was caught by bringing a stolen watch he had taken to a repair shop to be fixed. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Most of his time in prison was spent reading books, while his siblings joined the Nation of Islam. Through letters, Malcolm's siblings Reginald, Philbert, and Hilda wrote a lot to Malcolm, telling him about the religion of Islam. Reginald explained to him the teachings of Islam, and after learning more and speaking to Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the Nation of Islam, Malcolm decided to become a Muslim. 
In 1950, Malcolm Little began signing his name, Malcolm X. He explained why he changed his last name to X in his autobiography. He stated that the X replaced the name Little and instead now symbolized his true, unknown African family name. By this time, Malcolm was traveling to many different places and cities, speaking to large audiences. He was gaining a lot of media attention, and his speeches were often broadcast on the radio as well. He gave forceful sermons about black pride, self-reliance, and the belief that freedom and survival could only come from strict separation of the two races. He originally believed that the idea of integration, in which whites and blacks could live side by side in harmony and equality, could never happen. During this time, Malcolm increased membership in the Nation of Islam from 500 to 25,000 members in the span of 11 years. Malcolm X was asked to join in debates throughout the country Radio stations, universities, and television programs all tried to get him to come on their programs. But unlike Martin Luther King Jr. and many other black civil rights leaders, Malcolm X did not fight for racial equality and acceptance. He preferred and wanted separation of African Americans from whites. In 1958, he married Betty Jean Sanders, a nurse as well as a civil rights activist. He proposed to her from a gas station payphone. The couple were married by a justice of the peace only two days later. Together, they had six daughters. The last two girls, a set of twins, were born seven months after Malcolm's death. In 1964, Malcolm left the Nation of Islam after feeling betrayed and misunderstood. He found Elijah Muhammad's marriage affairs against his own teachings, and Elijah also did not like Malcolm's comments about the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. He embarked on a trip to North Africa and the Middle East, where he had his Hajj. To symbolize his spiritual awakening, as well as his commitment to a more orthodox Islamic tradition, Malcolm took a new name, El Haj Malik El Shabazz. His wife became Betty Shabazz. Malcolm may have left the Nation of Islam, but he was still a Muslim. Malcolm went on a pilgrimage to see the Islamic holy city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. It was at this point that his opinions of white people became better, and he then started to believe that white people could be good people too. And because of this pilgrimage to Mecca, where he had the change of heart over the beliefs of the Nation of Islam, when he returned, he then began to work with other civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. on ways to peacefully achieve equal rights. Soon after this, he founded the Organization of Afro-American Unity, or the OAAU. This was much different than the Nation of Islam. The OAAU was not a religious group. It was created to help all black people, and it taught that racism, not the white race, was really the true obstacle. In 1963, according to the New York Times, Malcolm X had become the second most sought after speaker in the United States of America. On February 14, 1965, Malcolm's wife Betty and their four daughters escaped from a firebomb that was thrown in their house. They lived in East Elmhurst, New York at that time. Due to repeated death threats, it forbid the family from traveling as well as ever feeling safe. 
Malcolm had predicted that he would be more important in death than in life, and had even foreshadowed his early demise in his book, The Autobiography of Malcolm X. The Autobiography of Malcolm X, his autobiography, was published in 1965. On February 21st, 1965, Malcolm was assassinated by the members of the Nations of Islam in New York City. Malcolm was addressing his organization of Afro-American unity. This was the event that truly changed the path of the civil rights movement. In March 1966, Talmadge Hare, Norman 3X Butler, and Thomas 15X Johnson were convicted of first-degree murder of Malcolm X. These three members of the Nation of Islam were convicted and sentenced to life in prison for murdering Malcolm. So as you can see, Malcolm X became a very important part of the civil rights movement as well as an important citizen for the equality of all people. And that is why we wanted to share these facts with you for Black History Month as well as history itself. Thanks so much for watching and if you learned something new, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and also don't forget to subscribe to us. And we'll see you on the next Hey Guess What.